The entire K2 News team has been dedicated to covering Kyron Horman's disappearance, but right now we're joined by our investigative team, Anna Canzano, Dan Tilkin, and Tom Jensen. Anna, let's go back to your story with Kane. He and Terry have an almost two-year-old daughter, Kiara. So has Terry seen their daughter since last summer? No, she hasn't. Um, you'll remember there was an alleged murder-for-hire plot in which she was accused of trying to hire a landscaper to kill her husband. That resulted in the restraining order, which also prohibits her from having contact with Kiara. And Kane has said that he would be open to having supervised visits between the two, but so far uh, that hasn't happened. That would require a parenting study, which so far she hasn't agreed to do. She's refused. Any sense why at all, Anna? Well, her lawyers have labeled her as being in the crosshairs of a criminal investigation, and a judge has ruled that Basically, if she were to proceed and uh, take part in any sort of parenting study or the divorce proceedings, that it may incriminate her. So, so far, everything's still on hold. Dan, about the investigation, so many cases are solved through DNA evidence. We've seen people convicted through DNA evidence and people set free. But in the case of Kyron, maybe of no use. Well, almost a year has gone by, years gone by. And, and say they find a crime scene and say they manage to find some article with some amount of DNA on it, even after a year. Well, that DNA might have the DNA of a family member, which you would expect there to be. If there's a stranger, hey, there's a stranger DNA, case solved. What is the stranger DNA doing here? If it's a family member, as though we, as you know, we all have kind of been talking about might be a high probability of that happening, well, you would expect a family member's DNA to be there, whether it's a father, mother, etc., or a sister, because we all live in the same household. And so if you find DNA and it's somebody that you would expect to be there, that does not help you one bit. Okay, Tom Jensen, question for you. Uh, Terry, in Roseburg, what's she been up to? Does she even have a job? What's going on with her? As far as we know, she does not have a job. Uh, I have found online where she's been looking for work uh, as a teacher. She's been uh, posted her uh, resume online searching uh, teaching uh, jobs, but uh, people around Roseburg tell me that as far as they know, she's not working. They hardly ever see her leave her home, in fact. What about her neighbors, Tom? What are they saying about all this? Are they involved? Uh, would you talk to them at all? The immediate neighbors, like I said, say that uh, they've never or rarely see her leave the house. But the one thing that people say over and over again is, why isn't she talking? You know, her attorney, after she got an attorney, he probably told her not to talk. But even before she got an attorney, she wasn't talking. She stopped talking to police. And that's the one thing they want to know. Why aren't you talking? Why aren't you helping? All right, uh, Tom, Anna, and Dan, you guys have put a lot of into this, a lot of work. We appreciate all your fine work in covering this story for us. We want to leave you tonight with images from the Wall of Hope, where people from all around the world have sent messages. They know Kyron Horman's story, and they're hoping for his return. I'm Deborah Knapp. And I'm Steve Dunn. From all of us here at K2, thank you very much for watching, and good night.